In the previous two Excel tutorials we've looked at the basics, the very basics of Excel and now that you've mastered the basics it's time to move on and actually use Excel to do some fun stuff. Now one of the ways I use Excel in the classroom is to use it to actually help me in my administration. I can use Excel to and have created Excel self-marking sheets so that you can set children tasks that mark them, print them out and you have a record of their achievement. But to do that we need to put this together in uh, this kind of a tutorial together in three different ways. So the first thing I'm going to show you is the basic marking function that we can do. And what we're going to do is set, create a maths test here that's going to um, do some marking for you. So the first thing we're going to do is lay out our test. So today we'll be using the autofill function and we'll be using the if function of Excel. So we're going to do a, a multiplication test, so we can't use the operator signs in Excel because um, it thinks that's going to do something else. We have to put the words in, which is all good for maths um, vocabulary. Multiply by, and let's just, um, in fact, let's make that font a bit smaller. put in here equals and again we'll format that to 8 and so we're going to work on this now. The, the key thing we're going to do now is put a formula in here that's going to let the students know whether they've got the answer to the question correct or incorrect and whether they should actually redo it. And to do that we're going to use the if function and the if function works like this. Remember all Excel um, formula start with the equal sign and then we come to these options here if and if we zoom into this you can see that we have um, three values um, the test the result if the test is true and the result if the test is false so click OK so what we're going to do is we're going to click equals if and this operator is going to come up and we want to know that if this cell here equals this cell times this cell then we have uh, a value so we want to know if E1 e, e is equivalent to A1 times C1 if the value is true, and we'll need to, I'll, I'll zoom in on this so you can see in a moment. If the value is true, we need to want the word the f we want the word correct um, showing. And if the um, if it's not if it, if that argument is not fulfilled is not correct, we want to put in. try again and click OK. Well I'm going to zoom in first so you can see. So what it says here is it, if the cell E1 equals A1 times C1 then if it does in this cell put the word correct and if it doesn't put the value try again. So click OK. Now obviously this comes up as correct because nothing times nothing equals nothing but you don't want to have a whole bunch of corrects before you start so what we have to do is we have to actually put another if function around the outside of this this current function here so what we're saying here is we need to put this whole function as another if false um, value now can you see around any text we've got these double quotation marks so what we're going to do now is I'm going to, and I'll zoom in again and I'll show you later um, what we need to do now is we need to retype this formula and we need to put another formula in that says if open bracket if this cell E1 equals 
and I'm putting two double quotation marks in to indicate that it's an empty cell um, and you separate everything in Excel by a comma when you're doing your own formulas. If the empty cell is empty then the result we want to display is empty which we say by two blank um, commas otherwise we put a comma in. If that's the false condition, if there is a value in there let's put a comma in, sorry um, there was, we're saying that the, the second argument is um, I'll zoom into it again, we've got to make sure all our brackets work so our argument says if E1, this cell here has no value nothing in it then the comma says and return a value of no nothing in the cells if that is incorrect if there is something in the cell then we have to run this new if function then we run the function we wrote earlier on and we have to make sure that our brackets all count up we open a bracket we open a bracket we close a bracket we close a bracket good so we're all good and so once we're happy with that we hit return and now we can see that correct has in fact disappeared so now let's be teachers and put in a sum that says what's 4, 5 multiplied by 4 and we can test that by saying okay let's be um, a little unsure of our 4 times table and say in fact it's 12 and we get this the result that says try again however if once we try again we realize we made a mistake we put in 20 we get the correct answer and this is a really good way of actually creating a self-marking test for yourselves it doesn't tally up and we can do that later but the great thing about the autofill function is if we just delete this and we delete that we can make a whole test by highlighting the cells we want to multiply and I'm only going to do the first four but you can just keep going on so we can do one here and five there and we'll just keep copying five all the way down here and if we put two in here and then because the autofill function Excel spots the pattern so now we've got a test of five questions that can be all marked so I need to delete all of those Whoops. right so let's put in here um, what's it one times five is five uh, ten fifteen and twenty look at us what I am okay and that really is a very powerful tool that you can use the if function allows you to create self-marking tests for the students and in fact you can set it to give feedback as well with the if function a very useful tool in the next um, Excel lesson we're going to look at arrays um, and eventually we'll look at um, macros um, and how you can pull all of those things together to create genuine self-marking, self-printing, self-clearing tests. But for this moment um, the IF function is a very useful tool that you should use and I recommend it very highly.